Hi, and welcome back. In the next couple of videos, I'll talk a bit about what machine learning really is from a conceptual standpoint. Don't worry, in a while we'll get to the nitty gritty details, but for now, let's just give a nice overview of what machine learning really is. So before giving any technical definitions, let's just look at a single example. Here we have a lot of hand-drawn numbers. You can see here on the right, we have lots of zeros on the first row, and then lots of ones, lots of twos, and so on. And they're all drawn slightly different. That's just because people have different handwriting. So here we want a program that takes in an image of a handwritten number and outputs the correct number. So if the program takes in, say, this image here, then it should output the number six. Essentially as the input to the problem is the pixel placements where there are color. So if you enhance this six here, you can find that on certain pixels it is white and on certain pixels it is black. This is what we know and what we want to output is the actual number it represents. So in this case, hopefully when the program reads this small image here, it outputs six and not four and not eight. So again, a bit more enhanced here. Hopefully we would have a program that reads all the pixel placement here and outputs the actual number two. The reason this is a machine learning problem and not just a traditional software coding problem is that it is incredibly tedious to hard code what this program should do. Imagine that you say, yeah, okay, if you have black pixels there, 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 and there, that looks like a two. But if you look at all the other different twos that one can write, many of these will actually fail this. So you need to make sub cases and special cases and so on. And this gets really, really complicated really fast. You probably need thousands of lines of code to handle this and thousands of lines of code. It's really hard to maintain. It's hard to write, takes a lot of time. It might simply not be worth it at all. And even though you do it, it might not work really well. But this is a great machine learning problem. And this leads us kind of to the definition of machine learning. So a machine learning model is an algorithm that takes inputs to predict outputs, but specifically the algorithm should learn in quotes from the data to become more accurate. So machine learning models is pieces of software that heavily uses the data at hand to improve the software in such a way that it can make accurate predictions. So just some definitions, the inputs to a machine learning model are called features, some other people call this predictors, and the outputs are called targets. This is just terminology, I'll try to stick to the features and targets, or inputs or outputs. I just wanted you to know that these are essentially the same things. You have your features, x in this case, and then you use a machine learning model to predict the targets, y. So for the handwritten number example, the features here are essentially just the pixel placements where you have color and the targets is essentially spitting out, is it a two, is it a five, is it an eight and so on. So let's just give you a few more examples to warm you up to this idea of machine learning problems. So one problem is to essentially take in patient data and output the disease probability. So it might be a really serious disease and we want to know how far the disease has progressed. We can perhaps estimate this by first collecting different information and then predicting the disease probability with a machine learning model. So in this case, the features is maybe age or sex or blood tests and BMI. And the target, the thing we want to predict is a number indicating the disease probability. And for this example, you can see that some of the features are rather easy to get from a patient, like your age, sex, and maybe a simple blood test or BMI, but actually the disease probability can be very hard to determine. That's where the machine learning model comes in. So a second example is to classify penguins into penguin species. So you might measure their beak length or height or color, or maybe their fur thickness and so on. And you want to predict something. And that target is the species of the penguin you're looking for. Finally, as a last example, you want maybe to separate customers based on some consumer data. In this case, the features you can measure is the time of their, say, shopping. This is a shopping website, and maybe it's the set of previous purchases that I've made. Maybe it's the country of residence of the user, and so on. And here, rather than having a target, say, getting a number between one and 10, your goal is maybe a bit more broadly to get a better understanding of the consumers and different consumer groups, and have, for instance, how they're clustered. I hope you'll think about these three and also the handwritten digits example that I gave you previously. Think about these four examples and realize that these kind of problems have one, a lot of data in them, and two, it would be very hard to try to solve with traditional software development simply because hard coding in this could be very, very tricky. Now that we have a few examples, in the next video, we're going to look at some terminology specifically related to supervised and unsupervised and classification and regression problems. So stay around for that and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, and welcome back. So in the previous video, we saw some nice examples of these ML problems, but now I want to give you some machine learning terminology. 
First of all, people typically abbreviate machine learning as ML. This is very common. I'll use it sometimes and sometimes I'll say machine learning. A more important distinction comes with supervised versus unsupervised machine learning. So let me just give you the definitions and then we can talk about it. So supervised machine learning is a set of problems where one is given a set of features and the corresponding targets and the machine learning algorithms you use should learn from this to better predict these targets. As I said, we make the models learn how to deduce the targets from the features through a process called training. And you might be like, isn't this just machine learning, what you really described in the last lecture? And yeah, kind of, but this is the most important branch, or at least the biggest branch of machine learning, but one also has unsupervised machine learning. Unsupervised machine learning, these are problems where one is given a set of features, but you don't know the targets. And in such a problem, you have maybe broader views like understanding the features or essentially clustering the features or finding outliers and so on. But don't worry, for the majority of this course and definitely for the first part, we'll only consider supervised machine learning. It's only in the latter parts of the course that we'll consider unsupervised machine learning. So you don't need to think about this much at all. Just want you to have heard this distinction between supervised and unsupervised. And of course, this will be much clearer once you get into the actual models and problems. Secondly, within supervised, we can also make a further kind of distinction. We have regression problems and we have classification problems. So what's the difference here? In supervised machine learning, we separate these, as I said, if you're trying to predict a target, which is a continuous number, so say one number between zero and 100, any decimal number in between, then the problem is called a regression problem. On the other hand, if you're trying to predict a category, such as red, green, and or blue, then the problem is called a classification problem. So think of classification problems as you're trying to put things into different classes. So really the best way to understand this is not for me just to read up the definitions to you, it's essentially to try to look at the examples we had in the previous lecture and try to fit them into these neat boxes. So first of all, we have the handwritten number detection. This is the first example we talked about with the handwritten numbers and you're supposed to detect what the actual number is. In this case, this is a classification problem because you only have a certain number of categories that you can fit in. You can get the number zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and that's all of your categories. So this is an important point. Even though the classes are numbers, like zero, one, two, all the way up to n, it can still be a classification problem because we're only concerned with discrete classes. In this problem, we cannot get the number 6.315, for instance. And this is supervised because when we're training the model, we're given both the features and the targets. When it comes to the disease probability example that we saw earlier, we're predicting the disease progression based on say age or BMI and so on, then really this is a regression problem because now we're trying to predict a number, say maybe between zero and one of the progression of the disease. So this is a supervised regression problem. The penguin species classification, and here I'm kind of giving you a big hint in how I'm calling this, this is of course also a classification problem. Here you can predict that a penguin is, say for instance, an emperor penguin. So this is again a supervised classification problem. But the last one, which was a consumer understanding, we're essentially looking at consumer data and then trying to understand some features of the consumer. So maybe say your goal is to cluster them. This is an unsupervised problem at least the way I've phrased it, because here we only have information about the feature, say maybe time of purchase and country of residence and so on, but we don't have a specific target goal that we've measured. So in this case, this is an unsupervised and what's called clustering problem if we want to cluster it. So again, we won't talk about unsupervised for a long time, so don't worry about that, but we'll definitely look quite far into the supervised problems in machine learning in the first part of the course. So on the left here, we have the features on the x-axis and the targets on the y-axis, and we have a lot of data values here. What you can do with the model, for instance, is to find the line that best fit your data. This is the green line here. You can see here that the green line goes through maybe one of the points, or I guess maybe two here, but it doesn't go through most of them, but it is the line that best fits the data. And once you have this great line representing your data, if you now have a new data point, say it's represented here, if you want to find the corresponding target value uh, that is on this axis, then you just go up all the way until you hit the line, and that is your predicted value. Said in another way, given that you know that this is your essentially feature value, then this here, precisely going up to the line, is the best guess you can do. 
So again, this is called linear regression, finding the best line that fits your data. This is one of the most traditional and old school machine learning models that exists and is incredibly useful. I just wanted to show you this graph because it illustrates what a regression problem really is. In a regression problem, we have this kind of continuous possibilities of predictions here that you can get, not just some predefined classes. And just to kind of show you a few examples for the future, as I've told you, you can kind of split machine learning up into supervised and unsupervised machine learning models. And you can again split supervised into regression and classification. And here on the right, you can see a lot of machine learning model names. We'll try to cover all of these in the course. I just wanted to show you that you can fit most of these nicely into these categories. So for instance, here on top, you have linear regression, and that is a regression machine learning model so that handles supervised regression problems. What's really important to notice with this graph, say if you go one down here to this support vector machine, that's also a machine learning model, but you can see here that this is covered both by this classification thing here and by the regression. So support vector machine is a machine learning model that can be used for both classification and for regression problems. The same is true for decision trees and random forests. Here you can see that you have a lot to look forward to in this course, and I hope you're as excited as I am. In the next video, I'll talk a bit about the anatomy of a machine learning project. So essentially the given steps that you go through in a machine learning project, again, from a very high level view, but still I want you to have this understanding before we actually go down and start coding.